Today we're going to be looking at the Meditating Mages for a little bit here. Now, disclaimer though, I don't think this deck is very fun to play, but we're going to use it here just to show you guys off how it works, because some people are definitely playing it on the ladder, and it is pretty strong if you don't have answers to it. So let's take a look, and we'll see how it does here. So Curse Scroll for extra consistency. You're going to want a lot of consistency in this, because you need certain cards. You have Pincer Maneuver already for some consistency, but you can't draw into neutral cards with this, so the Curse Scroll helps a lot with that aspect. Onermancy, again, you can't draw into this with Pincer Maneuver, so Curse Scroll gets you this. Otherwise, you're going to have to draw it. And you have Amphibious Assault for searching Chapter of Wizards to make Rune Word, and then the Order's going to spawn you another mage. The idea here is you want to spawn as many of the Meditating Mages as possible, and then use their carryover. The Saya here is going to reset all of their orders, so you set up all your Meditating Mages, get their Patience is taking, you click all their abilities, play to Saya, and reset them, and then they carry over from round 1 to 2, and then with the order reset, you click the orders in round 2, and carry over from round 2 to 3. There's also a version of gameplay here you can do, where you reset the orders, and then round 2, you play the Arzua Adepts, and watch them take like 10 points a turn each, and then it's 2-0 your opponent that way. I like, well, I don't like doing anything with this deck, but going for the round 3 carryover I think is generally stronger, but you can certainly go for a 2-0 attempt that way if you think they have no tall removal or something. Queen Adelia creates one, a Meditating Mage. You'll notice here there's a very common theme of everything creating Meditating Mages. Mushy Trouble creates one, and then the Golden Froth protects them. Donmir Troy, Defender, Adarin spawns extra copies. You have a lot of ways to spawn the Meditating Mages, so he'll actually make a whole bunch of them. And the nice thing is with this, when you start clicking all their orders, the Resilience get to get the Resilience. The Vitality will heal them up for round two as well. Although you can expect a lot of the one power ones to die. Leticia, Leticia is the greedy card here. I think Leticia makes it stronger. Leticia is good for the uh, carryover potential here. You increase the patience with her. Really the reason I put in here, her in here is that she's a big target and they might target it her instead of something else. Uh, you could put in another card for her slot in this boiling oil slot. Like an 8 and a 4 could be an option. It's just whatever you want to run here. These are the, something you don't have to necessarily run. Most of the cards you have to run in this deck, there's very, very, very little play. Another reason I don't like it too much is it's basically a set like Leticia, Boiling Oil, you can take out. Those are two. Reinforcements makes you another Meditating Mage, so it's in here. It also spawns it. It also has a lot of spawning for Adarin. Rune Word again spawns it. You could, Rune Word is a card you could take out if you want. I just kind of like Rune Word. And I put it in here. Xavier we have for Graveyard Interaction. Even in this deck, where we're only relying on our own strategy, I think we want Graveyard Interaction. Because one of the few decks that can beat this pretty consistently is Rain. Skelliger Rain with Falmar Storm and all that good stuff. So you want to be banishing the Yoga and the Undying here. Otherwise, you're opening yourself up to getting to, getting to, to losing. Because they'll, they'll Storm, then kill off all your guys. The Rain matchup is still kind of hard with this deck, I think. I don't have, won't have too much experience... For, with it from this side, but have plenty with the rain side, and I think I've beaten almost every Metang Mage deck I've played with rain. There's no answers to your um, Messenger of the Sea is the big thing there, and you can out-tempo them, which is kind of, if you got tempo them round one, that's where you get the uh, good advantages of the deck. Runewood we mentioned, Boiling Oil, Dwim Viandra, uh, you reset the location order here on Chapter of Wizards to keep spawning stuff. You're going to want to wait a turn, so you don't spawn her, but it's really good. You could run one. Spores, Ice Fist Spores, and as a 4 provision tech option. You can put in something else here for sure. I just wanted to put in Spores because I thought it would be one of the better cards. Our big threat here, what makes this deck lose, is losing round 1. So, you don't want to do that. You can lose round 1 with Tissaia because you can reset and carry over to round 3. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Also, if the opponent passes, you kind of just win round one. They just pass round one, you just make a whole bunch of mages and pass, and then see if they can answer it. But yeah, I put spores in. We've got the Megascopes, the Spawn more, the Adepts. If you have a bunch of the Meditating Mages going, the Adept will get like plus five or ten a turn, somewhere in there. And that's crazy, so it's in here. And you also want this for the 2-0 attempt, if you're going to go for the not carry over to round three. One Lyrian Scytheman. 
I threw him in as a 4, just because all the meta mages will have Vitality and boost themselves up. He can play for quite a bit. I wasn't really sure what other 4s to throw in. We had one Spores. We had Xavier. I didn't really want Xavier and Squirrel. But uh, you could if you want. Two Pellers for Purify. Um, yeah, a lot of these mages are probably going to get locked, so I put in two Pellers. The four provision slots here, the Pellers, Scytheman, the Spores, these are very flexible. I guess you could take out Adepts. I really wouldn't. I, nah, let's just say no. Just keep the Adepts. But you can take out Spores, Scytheman, Pellers. I like Pellers. I'd keep them in, by the way. They help out quite a bit. And then Boiling Oil and Leticia. These are the slots you have to play with and put in what you want. I like these choices, though. We have the two Meditating Mages. So yeah. Also, last note on these spores. I think I skipped over this. Like I said here, one of the matchups is kind of hard is Skellige Rain, and you can spores the Messenger of the Sea. So that's why I included it. But yeah, and the two Meditating Mages. So this is the deck. Uh, let's see how it does. It will probably do pretty well. Uh, I'm not sure it'll be very fun to play. But uh, we'll try and do it and show you guys how it works at least. And maybe you'll have a better understanding of how the deck works and how to beat it. Alright, started off with the first game here. Oh, it's Trinet. Um, I think Soldiers. Okay. So it should be pretty good. I'm sure he has an idea. I'm sure he knows how to play against this. So this might actually be a little bit more difficult. Be an interesting matchup, that's for sure. Uh, our hand, though, is really good. We have Chapter of Wizards. We have Queen Adelia. We have Anthidius Assault. We have Mushy Truffle. We have Domir of Troy. The only card we're missing is Idarin. And we don't have Odomancy to get him. So, other than that, our hand's really good. That does make our hand significantly weaker, though. So, uh, the thing with the one damage stuff, though, is even with the Adarin copies, I'm sure our, our, Dyer, our Idarin would die here. Play Dominir of Troy and give it to him because it's going to get Invocation. It also helps him quite a bit if he takes this with Invocation to play later on, but we don't really have a choice here. I think we'll go Leticia next. Uh, if he Invocations this, Leticia might be safe. Yeah, we knew that was happening. I don't really watch Trinet's stream or look at his deck, so otherwise we might know if he's playing double tall remover or not. He might be playing Heat Wave too. Some of the decks with lower power levels play double big removal cards. Invocation and Heat Wave might be an option here. I just say that because Nickers came out here, which makes me think he's gonna have he wants Nickers as a neutral card, so he's probably gonna be taking advantage of some other neutral cards. There might be a Heat Wave. Let's see. He has to be going for round one tempo here. Soldiers. This could either be regular soldiers with the armor, like a <clears throat> Yennefer, like the one we showed off a week or so ago, or it could be the Slave Infantry version. I'm not sure which one it is yet. But yeah, we have our chapter of wizards. With our leader Billy here, the thing you normally want to draw is Leticia. And we're playing chapter of wizards. Our chapter of wizards is very vulnerable to a heat wave here. And since we have Super Vandra on our hand, we really don't want him to do that. We could go for double meditating mages here. We go for Leticia. We have our Queen Adelia to put one behind shield, but he probably has Tourney Joust. I'm guessing he has Tourney Joust. Let's go for Beast Assault and pull our Leticia out. Power, I'm kind of nervous he actually does have a heat wave. And if he does, he has to answer like Yeah, he has to answer Leticia instead. Which is good because I want my Dwim Vandra order go or reset going off on this location. Let's go Queen Adelia. And then we'll go for our Meditating Mage. We're not going to be able to get out very many Meditating Mages. And we have to watch out because he could... If he's playing stuff like Knickers, he definitely knows he wants round 1 tempo. And I don't want him getting round 1 tempo because that makes our deck significantly worse. I'm sure he knows that though. Okay, we want to draw a Tissaia. Uh Xavier is not going to be important in this matchup, so we'll put him on the bottom of our deck. Or shuffle him back in rather. Let's see, what's he gonna do here? I'm still not sure if he's playing which version of Soldiers is. I think with this, with the Blightmakers and the Knickers, I'm guessing it's not going to be the version with Yennefer. We'll play our Dwim Verandra here, we'll reset our Chapter of Wizards, and then we'll hold off on it until we play our Meditating Mage next turn. We'll go Meditating Mage, um, probably the one off of Mushy Truffle. And then we'll trigger this again. I'll get us four. And then we'll play the one off our hand that gets us five. Runeward I don't want to play. I want to make sure I set up the mages first. And Runeward helps. 
if he starts to get a lot of tempo plays, <clears throat> that's when we go for our, our Etsu Adept. <clears throat> if we need more points, that's when we start playing her. Because uh, she'll be worth quite a bit. We almost have enough points on our Van Art student also to kill his crossbowman. Kind of waiting on that. If he kills it early, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, we're getting one locked. We don't have a Peller. So we're getting our... He's controlling our mages very well here. Should be a good test to see if it's still good. It's still... The decks can still win. Chapter of Wizards. And we all, all, almost there. Almost there. One more turn. Now, he doesn't have too many big point plays yet. There's always Leader and a Fawn. Uh, slave... Oh, his Slave Infantry version. Okay. Um, if he has Jermaine, this round could be scary. So I think we do actually want our... Hmm. He hasn't played Jermaine yet, but when he plays Jermaine, we'll have to play our Aritsu Adept to match the points potential. Metang Mage here. So we are only going to have four carryovers. That's obviously still a lot. But you can get way more. We didn't have access to Adar in this game. No owner Mancy, no Adar. Like I said, Runemer doesn't guarantee us one of these. What will he go for here? We don't actually have very many points in our hand. We gotta be careful here. Uh, Alright, so Adept. Um... I think we could hold off on Adept and be greedy with this rune word. So I want to see what it gets us. Might be a bad idea. I think we'll probably go for it anyway. Decree. Oh, I'm guessing it's a Jermaine then, right? Yeah, there he is. And he's got this set up for his V-Griff. I'm not sure he counts the card's name, but the one that triggers the deploy abilities. That's four. He deploys each of these as four. That's a 12 point play. Uh, that puts him to 15, 40, 59. We have to go, I think. I don't want, I want this other meditating mage, probably. I think I want another meditating mage over our rune word here. I want the, I want the guarantee. I'll throw this down. It was a 59. We can still beat him here. Uh, I want to be greedy and wait a turn. We could click these. I want more. Without Leticia to boost them up, I want these these patients as high as possible before I click on them. Let's see what he goes for. Yeah, we knew that was coming. So he's at 59. Uh, let's see. 59. Each of these gets about two. Is plus six. We, we can win this round here still. Our only issue is if he plays this last card, I think he wins. And that's really bad. So we'll go for our Tissaia reset. A band of traitors who sold their souls to kings. We'll reset that. Uh, let's see. We're good here. We, st we still win the round with our Zoo Adept unless he plays his last card. The reason that we did this, if he plays his last card, we have to keep this because we won't win the round. And then we needed to have done our Tissaia reset already. Okay, so we're fine here. We get one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're good. Because this is going to tick. We only get one turn of ticking because he passed, so we don't go back to him and back to us like we normally would. But it should still be enough. I think... If he played this last card... Maybe he drew as a fawn. He might have drawn as a fawn. I'm not sure. Let's see if he shuffles this back. Okay, that's Donnie of Troy. Uh, this looks like a fine hand. I didn't see what he did here. So out of our deck, we could play a Darin. Some of Andros would, wouldn't be bad. We can't play both, because they're both neutral. So... Uh, let's see. kind of want a Darin. Why do I want a Darin? Because we can make a copy, right? It's hard to do that depth's not going to be great here. Uh, we, Megascope we could do also. So we can do a Darin, Megascope. Oh, wait, no. Megascope's neutral too. Yes, we'll just throw out a Darin. Like uh, we probably should have picked Wimvandra. Megascope was blue though, and blue's a color that is associated with Northern Realms. You know, you gotta, gotta get yourself confused by stuff like that sometimes. But yeah. So we're going to play Darin. I think we can just pass here and be okay. There's Ramon. 
I think we could pass and be fine. I think I kind of want to play these here. Do Illusionist. This is going to give him a Meditating Mage almost certainly. Oh, it could be a Ban Artist student, right? Because the Ban Artist student's patience is pretty high. Oh, he's going for a big carry over to counter us, I think. Scytheman will play for like 12 points or something here. Pretty good. Obviously, he only gave us 7. Alright, only pass here. So this is exactly how the deck works. I'm sure he knew how to play against it, and it still was able to win. Game 2, then. It's a good start to show off the deck there in Game 1. Okay, this looks like... This could be the Arnagod deck. That's pretty common with this leader ability. It could also be a rain deck. The issue here is that probably... Both of those decks have options for a very strong round one with a fair amount of... Well, actually, Counter God doesn't have as much control, but they have a fair amount of power round one. Peller is really just a purifier our own stuff, even if he has Defender. This hand's pretty good, though. Um, yeah. We'll keep Xavier in case it's a rain deck. We need to banish something. If he doesn't, we'll just put Xavier back in with our Pincer Maneuver or something like that. Chrome Mother. We could keep him to banish her, but... Uh, not sure. Okay, we want our Don Mirror of Troy. We could get it with Amphibious Assault. We could also draw it. I'm gonna play it with Amphibious Assault here. There's the argument that you draw it, but we can't draw it yet because we haven't played a card out of our hand. Otherwise, you'd draw it first. So the Amphibious Assault boosts something. Because you're getting two cards out of your deck either way. If the Amphibious Assault pulls something out, that's Just lower, it boosts it up, yes. that's a better value. I wanted to open with it, so that wasn't a choice. Okay, Leticia, if there's no answer here, we I think we just win. But we have to see how many points. If he can generate a lot of points, we won't win. Uh, I want Chapter of Wizards still, and Adarin. Let's go with Chapter of Wizards. Let's see if we can win without Adarin. Let's just see what this looks like without Adarin. We could have picked it there. But let's see what happens if we just don't use him. So we could draw a chapter of Wizards with our leader and also play a Darn. But I'm curious how well this deck does if we just don't do that. We didn't have him last game. But this time I want to deliberately not draw him and see what happens. I'm kind of curious to see... Well, I'm really just curious to see how much value we can actually get here. Chapter of Wizards gets, chapter of Wizards gets Meditating Mage. Let's take our Queen Adelia, probably. A deck wouldn't be bad either. There's not a Meditating Mage. We'll go Queen Adelia. So let us create another one. We're not going to need any of our Purifies here. He doesn't have any interaction. The only way to watch out for Gremist. If he has a Gremist, we actually could be in trouble. But he's going to have to play at range and then hold Purifier Defender. Then every turn we'll probably lose the Resilience in our Meditating Mages. So we have to. We don't lose the resiliences because we'll hold off on clicking the order until as late as possible. They can only purify one or two. But yeah, I want to see what happens without Adarin again. Because a lot of times you see this deck going crazy, it's because Adarin spawned a bunch of copies and Adarin wasn't killed. But I want to see if it's we can actually have Adarin without Adarin just do the same thing again. Okay, he can't play Gremist anymore. His range row is full. That's kind of nice. Uh, Leticia is still going. We can go Meditating Mage here, or we can go with Truffle. It's not much Truffle, it's got carry over and the Resilience thing. Put this back here too. Uh, Twin Vage uh, has to go range towards ability to reset chapter. I think we'll just, don't worry about her. We can reset her for round two. There's Gremis, but like I said, it has to do a melee now. There's no Purifies coming out of that. I'm not sure that was the best move. Okay, Mentane Mages. We do want these ticking with the Vitality soon. So maybe next turn we'll do it. Well, let me do a Megascope skill, still. We could go for Reinforcements. That wouldn't be bad either. Well, we don't have to show it off because he quit. Game 3 then. That last one is real quick. Uh, once he couldn't interact with us, he quit. So... This is actually a good matchup for our opponent here. The rain deck, I think, is one of the strongest decks against this. That's why we're running Xavier and Spores. The reason why is you want a deck that can win round one, and you also want a deck that can create a lot of points. This can 
the raid deck can certainly win round one. You have stuff like Lelucine, Messenger of the Seagling, and you can actually outpoint their round two if they pass with a bunch of resilience cards. And you can also go for Fulmar and storm everything down and actually just kill the entire row of units. So that's actually an option here. We're going to play Domir of Troy. Again, he might have Grimmest to my Heat Wave. Although I think it's less likely he runs Grimmest than the previous deck. Lelucine. Okay, we're not getting interacted with again. Oh, which means we have a Darin. Still though, he's probably going to be able to win this round. We need a lot of points. The TC is going to be get us those points because it accelerates our patiences. We need the patience's vitality going earlier for the points is what I'm getting at here. And we also need a Darin this time. This time we'll definitely be using Darin. There's a, just that last game, I was curious. We didn't use him if we'd also win again, like the first one. But by choice. Okay, no messenger of the sea means we're fine for now. The Morkfarg here is very interesting. Let's go Chapter of Mages. Um, let's go... We can go for the Tutor. Blue up Leticia. I'm just concerned that if she gets too low, she'll die to Fulmar Storms. And like a Undying guy here. We don't actually have our Xavier, and I'm not really sure I want to own for it. Okay, there's the Messenger of the Sea. Fortunately for us, we have Boiling Oil to answer stuff like this. And with two shields. The thing is, do we want to... I think I want to set up. I want to set up. We could have killed that, but I want to set up here. I'm pretty sure if he wants to run this round, he will either way. Because he's going to have Freya's Blessing, right? So yeah, Freya's Blessing. Oh. Alright, this is exactly what you don't want to do against the deck, by the way. The only thing is, if he has Fulmar and Undying Guy, then it's not a problem. So we have to banish the Undying, and then hopefully see if we can't get something here. We want to fill both our rows with these, because if he has Fulmar, we're going to lose a whole row of these guys next round. We're going to reset our location here. We're going to reset this, play Meditating Mage, and then click the button. So we'll do this. Play Meditating Mage, click this again. Okay, um, I meant to click the Meditating Mage next turn in between. I kind of forgot we had to go to his turn for a second there. It's fine. It should be okay. Obviously, that was not ideal. Uh, let's make another one of you. Leticia will hold off on. We don't have to use her here for tempo. We can just go to as big a patience as possible. Meditating Mage again. Okay. Uh, when we draw, we get a melee row. So I need to draw my Thysaia or play her with Onomancy. I think I like drawing her. Hmm. Drawing her or playing her. Which one's better? What's our other card in our hand? Willing Oil. Let's draw her. We're going to draw reinforcements and play her. Yeah, let's go for that. I want to. This will give us another one round two. And then we can play her with Onomancy. Because Onomancy is Echo. And then we have Onomancy, Amphibious Assault, and whatever we draw. Make sure we click these before we get our Leticia out. Or not Leticia, Tissaia. Leticia will give them a lot of carryover in the next round. We could have done a turn earlier on here. Here, uh, We could click Leticia again and just discard this reinforcements for fun. Let's do that. We'll just discard this. I want to see how many points this is. Is this what we get the carry? The, the, the option here is we go down another card, but the carryover is much bigger. Because the patiences are really high now, so the vitality will take into round two and three. The status effects stay on units with resilience. So the vitality is ticked here. This gives us a bigger carryover to round three. And spores. Uh, it's a good first messenger to see by Owner Mancy to get it. Queen Adelia, that's not that big a problem because we can just shuffle back in when we use our leader ability. Um, we could have had two more if we didn't do Captain Mages wrong last round, but sometimes when I'm talking to you guys, I, uh, I I talk slower than I do stuff, and then we end up with that. Doesn't matter. We're gonna win here. One last game, game four here. Doctor Bisman. Oh, this should be a good Black test. This is um, Reckless Flurry, probably Witchers, or the Raging Bear deck. Reckless Flurry uh, could be Honor God. 
Well, this should be a good deck because this deck is very strong round one and has good control. So it should be a good test. I say it should be a good test, and then our hand is kind of awesome here. This hand's really strong. Like, I don't even... I mean, Peller we can put back, but maybe Megascope too. But that's a... Our hand's really good. We're missing Donmir of Troy and Amphibious Assault, but that's kind of it. We have a whole bunch of ways to get stuff. We can pull a Darwin. Mushy Truffles, you, you great draw too. Not a Magitating Mage. Won't say no to that. Now the test here is, will he remove all of our stuff or not? He can definitely remove a lot of our stuff. But if he doesn't have an answer to our defender, we might be okay. Go chapter wizards. I don't think they run heat wave. I mean, they don't usually run heat wave. The reason why is because they have plenty of removal. They usually play Geralt, Geralt Pen and then maybe a couple Geralt's and they have Junod for removal. So they usually don't have heat wave, so this location should be, should be safe. If it's not safe, we're, we lose out on a lot of value, though. Next turn, we draw our John Mir of Troy, put him down, and then we go for Ari Darin. Should be pretty straightforward, although I'm sure we lose a couple of these guys here. If he's playing the Madoc Bomb version, we might actually lose all of our Meditating Mages, as crazy as that sounds. Okay, no Bomb here, which means it's probably not Madoc. Moon okay, I just said that <laughs> we get bombed five seconds later. I said that because I figured he'd have a moon dust in that case, but Madoc. He put it comes out in that row. We want to play melee then, so we don't want to click our order. Let's get Don Mir of Troy. We're gonna need him, and I don't know about maybe reinforcements. Maybe Dwavandra. Reinforcements is the riskiest card because we might not have something to copy. So we'll go with that, even though it's normally good. We'll make her and put Dami of Troy here. Again, I don't... He's not going to have Moondust if he didn't have it last turn, which means this Meditating Mage is pretty safe. Pretty sure he would have played Moondust if he had it last turn. He could be baiting us, but... Either way, then the Moondust doesn't... Okay, there's the Heat... Oh, he did have Heat Wave. Interesting. So this matchup's going to be hard. He could even kill this Meditating Mage with a leader charge and clicking on Madoc. It might not be a bad idea for him. Yeah, there he is. So we want to set up, I think, from Vandra so we can click on this order again. We can also go for Mushy Shovel and Leticia. I want to click on Leticia while the Madoc's gone, so we can't just bomb click Madoc on it. I want him to definitely try to kill her, maybe with Junot or something, his last leader charge. I want those gone. Makes it much easier for us. Although you can see here, he's actually doing a very good job controlling our stuff. We still have the Adarin pull off of Ondermancy if we need it. That's why we're holding on to that. Should be pretty interesting. Now, Dumpveyandra sets up our location that we can click after playing a Med Tang Mage. Queen of Dahlia also. Raging Deer. Okay, so he doesn't have his Megascopes. That's good for us. Let's just set up this order again. We're going to play a Meditating Mage before we click it this time. Last time we uh, were talking too much and clicked it before we played a Meditating Mage and got an extra Kumveandra. Still worth four points, but not obviously, well, obviously not what we really wanted. So we're in the slower game here. What do you guys think about this deck? Is it too strong? Is it too annoying? I'm sure it's really annoying to play against, and I know it's annoying to play against. And it honestly doesn't seem that fun to play either in these few games here. But what do you guys think? Is there something wrong with it? Is the card Metting Mage too strong? Does the Adarin making copies the problem? What do you guys think? I have a nice little discussion about it. I'm not sure too much. It's, I haven't played it a lot, that's the thing. Uh, maybe I will play it some more and get an idea. It's not super fun, but it's pretty easy to play. Actually, really easy to play. Okay, here's a bomb. Bring back my duck. Uh, let's see. What do we want? What do we want here? I'll just make two more meditating mages, I think. If we put more stuff on the range throw. Let's not click our order yet. I want to hold off on the order because if he has control, I want to end with two meditating mages. Okay, he's our bomb to kill off this one. He does. Uh, will TC live? I'm guessing no. He does not. That's fine. 
like I was saying here, I actually think I might play some more games with this deck. Not because I like it, because I want to see how good it is. Do some experimenting. All right, now here we can click the chapter order. It's always saved it. Get two more. And now they're opposite my dock. So, not opposite my dock. So, he's not going to burn them. I expect a leader charge here and probably a Junod on the Idarin. We could also go Bear Witcher, Bear Witcher twice to kill Idarin. Oh, that gives us another spawn. We have two more spawn. Adarin's going to give us two more copies. And then we play out our Mantain Mage to say a last. And unless he has more control, we still will end up with a lot of Meditating Mage carryover. But he still has his Geralt Ken play for Bear Witcher. He still has Portal. A lot of powerful cards. He might not be playing Portal if he has it. He might be having it depth in his hand or something. Ooh, he missed the Adarin. So Junon's not going to kill it. That's going to be annoying. If he has Gutting Slash, though, it's now set up. No Gutting Slash. Aaron Conduct. Do you kill the guy or go for a double bear witch on the Darren? Kill the guy. Okay. Not a bad choice. Uh, we have Queen Adelia. I, d I think he's out of bombs. I think he's out of bombs. But... Mm, I don't want to stack too much in a row. So these people are just playing random blasts, right? So we'll go here. I think he's out of bombs, but if he's not, we get three extra damage on my dock. Well, three damage doesn't kill our guy. I'm a little more concerned he actually has row removal. It's a tech. He's already shown he's running Heat Wave, which is not a normal card for these decks. At least previously, it might be normal now. So I think he might actually be trying to tech against stuff. Makes me concerned about some row damage. And I think he's out of bombs. He would have played it before, right? He would have bombed off our Meditating Mage. So he doesn't have any left. He's Geralt Ken as a big play. Who else does he have? I'm trying to think here. No Megascopes, no Bombs. Uh, if he's running Arnegod, that would be good for him here. Although, Queen of the Elia would still give us another Mage. Two Mages. The Darn would spawn one. The Sure Deploy would go off, and then the mid time Mage we played would have a shield and that would block the damage from Arnegod. Oh, Svalbard Totem, that's a big play by him. Can we still win the round? I think we can. Queen Adelia. Meditating Mage, get two of them. And then we'll just boost the back ones up, just in case he has some uh, row damage. It's like one damage, row damage, or two damage. Gird in particular, but we're past the Gird's. I try and win, so that's not a threat, just like if he has something like that. I don't want to have two one strength guys sitting around. I'm about to take to say, uh, that should be enough here. I'm, As you can see, like even though he controlled a whole bunch of our stuff, to be fair though, he didn't kill a Darin, and killing a Darin is sort of a big deal. A Darin gave us three mages. Uh, a Darin, we have three less. I guess one of the ones he killed earlier was a one, so maybe two less. I'm going to say it's three though. I think that... I'll just say it was three. I think he gave us three total. Oh, he did give us three total, but the one that he killed, he wouldn't be able to kill a different one with. Here, I'll kind of bear with We're going to lose another one here. He's doing a very good job controlling all this. As one would expect. This is why I was curious about this matchup. Uh, let's see. We're down 20. We're still fine, though. Uh, let's go for... No reinforcements. I think we'll, I might want the Adept. We might need the points from the R to Adept. We can pull with Amphibious Assault, though. This gives us the Amphibious Assault carryover next turn. Because this Mentane Mage is enough tempo. We still need to win this round. And this is how we do it. So we go for this Adept. It's going to take a bunch of Patiences. It gets boosted by the Assault here. Amphibious Assault goes back to our hand round two. And we get plus four next turn from the Vitalities. And six from Tesseus, so we get plus ten. He should have played a card. He could have won this round. Although maybe if he wins the round, it doesn't matter. That's possible too. So we'll reset that. Carry over. The by the way, in case you didn't see there, the Mentane Mages reset after the Art to Adept ticks, so she won't get boosted this turn. We only have four. Right, we can make more, though. We only have four, but we can make more. That's a rhyme. Xavier again's not great here. 
I think we're going to have to sell out the other student and maybe owner Mancy the Dwim Viandra. Uh, that sounds pretty good. Normally you could just click the abilities here and pass. Put Art Zoo a student and pass, but I don't want to. I want to play our cards this round, I think. There's no reason to go for that other strategy. Uh, let's just click again. Boost these vitalities higher. <sighs> Pull out of our deck with Owner Mancy. Um, Viandra. And we reset the location order and reinforcements next turn. Or when we pull out our adept. Now our adept's not gonna have the patience anymore. When we owner when we play our reinforcements, we will get another meditating mage and then we'll click the location order get an extra. There's his portal, that's a pretty solid tempo card. He still has to win the round though, and now that we're getting these patiences ticking, it might be kinda hard. So we'll reinforce. Make one of these. Get another one, and I think we're good. He, he answered so many of our students, but he didn't kill a Darin. Killing a Darin's really big, really big deal. But I'm sure everyone already knew that. Quite a bit of patience is ticking. Might just pull the Arzu Adept anyway, because it's a four. Place your nine then, like these other ones. Xavier would have been really nice for round one. He would have banished our Order Mercy and our Amphibious Assault. But again, we don't actually need those this round. It just gives us extra value. We'll click these. And then, I don't know, Leary and Scytheman maybe? Scytheman's probably the highest value. Okay, it doesn't matter. GG. So what do I think about the deck? Do I like it? The answer, obviously, to the second question there is no, I don't really like it. I don't think it's fun to play. And it's certainly not fun to play against. So, not really like it. Is it good? Kind of. I think it is. It's kind of hard to tell. You're going to get... It's good for making highlights, right? I mean, you're going to have a bunch of carryover. Then your opponent's going to play like Siegfried of Densel, or you're going to be running Oxer at Letho and just lock them all. That'd be pretty funny. Um, but it actually seems like it can handle control, which is the thing I was kind of worried about. When it first came out, I thought it might be like after the first couple of days or something would be bad because everyone would know how to counter it. But it could be the counter's too difficult. You might need like hyper, hyper control, like full Madoc precision strike stuff again. And that's no fun to play against either when you're trying to run anything that's not just like a point slam deck or like a meta control deck. It makes playing other decks not fun because the you everyone just runs their control tools to answer this, for example. And then when you try and play something fun, I don't know, your uh, Harmony deck. I'll just throw out Harmony because the thing we always make here. Then your stuff just gets answered. Now, is it... The question is, is it too strong? That is the question. I don't know. It seems really good. I've only played five games. I think I actually will play a bunch more with this deck uh, just to see how good it actually is over a larger sample size. So we're going to be doing that just for science. I'm curious. And then we'll make an opinion on that. So what do you guys think? Too strong? Too not strong? Too annoying? Anyway, into the card changes. Like I said in the beginning, the slots here you want to play with are your Pellers, Scythemen, Spores, Willing Oil, maybe Xavier, and that's it. Everything else is kind of set. Uh, you can fit stuff in here. Any of the four provision tech cards is usually what you want. I like Spores as one, because stuff that goes tall, like Messenger of the Seas, for example. You could also run a second Squirrel if you want some graveyard issues to deal with. And it's also always, always practice makes perfect. You're going to be playing a lot of the Meditating Mages. All right, so two here, three, four, the, the maybe five, this might make you another one, six, seven, eight, this makes you some. So practice makes perfect, it's a good option, it boosts them, and you, it's also really strong because of Yudarin. You make the one strength copy, then you use practice makes perfect to put the one strength one back and it comes back out boosted, and then it's also not set to one anymore. So that's certainly an option here. Uh, the slot here is probably one of the Pellers or Scythemans you want to take out for this. I might try it out. It also removes a lock. I think I'm going to run this. This is certainly a strong choice. I think it's better than Scythemen. It's certainly better than Scythemen, I think. It's better than Peller. It might just be better to make more. Because this essentially removes a lock as well as the Peller. So I think you want to be running both of these. 
I'm not sure why I overlooked that the first time. I, I'm not sure why I overlooked this, removing the locks. Removing the enemy stuff with the propeller doesn't really make a difference, because you don't have, don't have control of this one boiling oil tech card. So I think we'll put it in over Peller. We'll do this. So yeah, this is another. This is one of the options you might want to change. And then, like I said, boiling oil here. Dwim Viandra. I like the Dwim Viandra quite a bit. I also like her name, which I'm probably pronouncing completely wrong. And then we have Xavier. I like this option for the graveyard. Like I said earlier, one of the worst matchups for this deck is Rain. And Xavier banishes a lot of their key cards, and you have spores for a reset. I must enjoy the C. You could even run a second spores, but and this is what I think. This is good. Um, this is good. These are the changes I think I'd make. We're going to play a bunch of games with this and just kind of see if it's too good or not. There's no way to know without playing a whole bunch of games with the deck how strong it is. I think we're going to have to do that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed and hopefully this was instructive. If you see the deck, hopefully now you have some ideas of what to do. Although it's kind of hard to stop unless you have a lot of control. Make sure you can kill Adarin. That's a big one. With TC, I might be baiting for a Darren, but if you don't kill her, there's a lot of vitality going up, so you might want to kill her too. And at that point, you're like, well, what about Dominator of Troy? You need a lot of control to deal with this. A lot of control, indeed. Or you can need something with that can just beat it. For example, Rain, Fulmar, Ryogun, the Undying, Messenger of the Sea combos. It can certainly answer this. Uh, row damage, pretty good as well. They're going to be holding off on their orders. To get the patience just higher, so something like um, Simulance Double Lacerate can handle most of them pretty well. The ones behind Shield, Lilfgaard has stuff like Tourney Joust to answer them. So, you probably going to want to be. If you're worried about the deck, you can text some of that stuff in. And you can always, if you want to make a highlight clip about how you destroyed everybody, you can throw in your buffs, your buffed guy here, and uh, seek free of Den. Denelis, Denelis, how you say his name, and just make a clip of you destroying someone with it. It'd be pretty funny. Uh, other than that, though, I'm not sure it's great. You can also just run him as a secondary purifier if you want, but I wouldn't do that. Just if you want to answer this, because it's the only deck you're facing, he might actually get into your deck. But yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, even though this deck I don't think is too interesting to play. Or maybe it's interesting to watch. Who knows? Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed. We'll see you next time.